I think mental health could be a wide variety of different things. Me personally, I've obviously suffered with addiction, etc. So late night casinos, uh, late night binges, drinking, etc. Um, and then going to go out there and perform um, was a very, very difficult cycle. And um, as, I, as the years progressed and I moved up and got more and more in the public eye, I think by the time I was at Tottenham, it was, it was horrific for me. It was good. I was a little bit anxious coming in today. Um, it's my first sort of like exposure to, to speaking in front of people but it was good I had a good response from the kids um, and I, I felt comfortable that was the most important thing today yeah. like coming here today I felt relaxed I enjoyed it um, and I, I'm pleased with how it went Do you know what I mean the feedback mm -hmm. of the kids has been good so it's a good it's a good step in so it was yeah. definitely a good start so when you was growing up did you feel any peer pressure from family friends and stuff like that football related wise I wouldn't say growing up I felt any of that, you know, that my, mm -hmm. my family was fairly laid back and, and, and gave me the freedom to go and, and go and express myself and go and do whatever I wanted to do as a, mm -hmm. as a kid. I felt the peer pressure come from, from when I made it. When yeah. I made it, it was like, now, now I've got it, I can't lose it. Do you know what I mean? And it was like, I've got to keep this, I've got to keep hold of that. And that's where a lot of pressure came. Um, obviously, once you become a public figure as well, there's, there's, there's the shame. There's a shame around um, making a mistake. There's that yeah. little ring around you that Gary Lineker wants to join the Saturday night match of the day. Do you mean, there's that kind of like pressure that, um, that everyone sees you. When you have yeah. a bad day at work, bad day in the office, um, your wife and kids and family don't know about that. But when you have a bad day on a football pitch, that's broadcasted worldwide, you know? So that was, um, that was a pressure, I guess, yeah. that I felt. But, but growing up, making it, there was no pressure, you know? It was just once I made it, keeping hold of that. What was your environment like? Did you get any temptations to maybe go off the track which you was going down to get what you needed? I'll definitely say so, yeah. A lot of people I hung around with end up in jail. A lot of people yeah. I hung around with uh, have been unemployed for many years. Mm -hmm. Like There was um, definitely the circle I was hanging with at the time um, was full of people that, you know what, had a lot of ambition, had a lot yeah. of drive, but, mm -hmm. but got short-sighted, you know, like, I don't judge anyone that's ended up in jail, any of them things, like I said, a lot of my friends are there, a lot of people I still have contact with are in these places, but I feel like they got short-sighted and, and, and greed kicks in, and yeah. I feel like I had to sort of pull away from that and um, have my focus on my career, and, yeah. and of course that becomes difficult because uh, it's lonely, do you know what I mean, it's lonely, mm -hmm. like on a Saturday night where everyone else is out, want to be chasing girls or doing whatever, you've got to have that focus, and especially from a very young age, um, it's hard, do you know what I mean? It is hard, but, um, but I think you reap the rewards for that. Mm -hmm. I think um, making it as a professional, you, you earn money that you couldn't earn in everyday life, do you know what I mean? So, um, so definitely, like, I would definitely say it was a, it was a struggle, but um, it was well worth it, I'd say. Once you was going through your journey as a yeah. fo football player, what made you feel like, yeah, you know what, this is actually might become a reality, me being becoming a professional footballer might be? Yeah, I would say it's sort of, uh, when I went to Yeovil uh, mm -hmm. and in League One, that was when I was 17, when I went there and actually made my debut, it was like bizarre, it was like, wow, I come away, I'd actually got man in the match that game, man. I come away and I was sitting there, I'm like, wow, I've just played like league football, like that was something I'd always <laughs> dreamt of doing, you know, so it was like, wow, I've, kind of, I've done that and I've, I've achieved that, and then, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, from that moment onwards, I kind of never experienced that again. I kind of just played game after game after game after game. And I said that in my talk just back then, is that I really wish I stood back at one point and gone, wow, I've played for England or wow, I've played for Liverpool. Wow, I've played something. I kind of didn't take it in at the time. And I guess it's not regret. I don't regret many things because obviously it's part of my journey. It's part yeah. of where I am today. But that's, that's something that um, I guess I wish I could have appreciated more at the time, knowing, you know what, I've actually achieved something, man. I give myself a pat on the back. I think I was very harsh on myself yeah. and I was probably my harshest critic. I watched your YouTube video um, and I was so inspired by the way you were so brave to speak about um, what you was going through at that present moment. And do you, would you like to share a little bit of that story yourself as in how you were feeling in, that, in the moment you were when you were playing for, um, was it QPR? It was a QPR time? at the time, yeah. I had experienced it at a lot of clubs, you know, I experienced. Mm. So um, I suffered heavily with depression, which I spoke about publicly. Um, mm. And it was kind of spiraling out of control at that stage. Yeah. Um, I was trying to escape in any way I could, so alcohol was, was, was a vice, gambling was a vice, women was a vice, mm -hmm. anything to change the way I feel. Um, and I'd say it got to the stage where I was in a dark place because these vices, these so-called comforts were no longer there. You know, the money was going, the, you can only drink yourself to a certain point, and then, it, and, then, and, then, and then it got to the stage just to myself, like, this is not who I want to be, you know, this is not who I, this is not who I was putting this earth to be, this is not how my family raised me, I, I want to be different. Um, but it was a difficult challenge of finding out how to be different, you know, yeah. because um, the powers within, if you like, was not able enough, to, was not strong enough to stop it myself. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I had to seek outside help, um, you know, I went to rehab and I did a, lot, I did a recovery program, AA, etc. 
that um, that really helps me, you know, and um, keeps me on a, on a on a path where I could be human again, you know. I could be a father, I could be a son, uh, I could be a professional footballer, I could be all these things and enjoy it because, like I touched on, you know, like apart from my debut at Yeovil, a lot of my career, I never saw the blessings, I never saw what I had. Yeah. So it's really nice to sit here today, um, being a long time in recovery right now, and 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 being able to go, you know, what I can enjoy these things, I can enjoy moments like today coming here. Um, and it's nice to be present, you know. So um, that 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 experience I had, um, I like to share with other people because I know there's plenty of other people out there suffering within football, outside of football, in, in all industries. Um, and also I encourage them to come forward and do the same, talk and get help because being vulnerable, in my opinion, is um, it, it's, it's true strength, you know. So um, I think that should be um, pushed around by more people, but it's work in progress. Yeah, hundred percent. And um. I love the point you just said, it allowed you to be human again. Do you feel like when you was going through your the depression, you, you wasn't human? Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely say so. I was, I was lost, to be honest with you. I, was, I wasn't, I, I was, I'd lost me, I'd lost, I'd lost all, all sense of direction. Um, you, you lose sight of all them things, you know, like mental health um, isn't to be joked around with, you know. It's like really, I've lost people in recovery from, 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 these, from these diseases, you know. It's yeah. an, it is an illness. Um, I fully believe that. So I'd say, you know, by getting help, it brought me back to, to, to being a human and made me able to feel things again. You know, yeah. I wasn't always escaping my feelings. I'm able to feel things today. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's a true blessing, you know. 100%. And wasn't the football industry there to kind of help with that? Isn't your managers, coaches? I'd say, I'd say it's difficult um, within football um, to get the help you need. I'd say the PFA are obviously trying their best, but within football itself, um, the managers have 25 players to, yeah. to manage, and I think they struggle to do, um, struggle to help people individually um, yeah, yeah. because the pressure is such high stakes. You see people sacked after six months, <laughs> if not less nowadays. So um, I feel like there can be more support there. I feel like the PFA are pushing towards that, but um, I feel like it's, it's still got a way to go. What could have helped you then in that case? Do you think if your manager was there for you or not naming any name, but yeah. do you think if you had that someone who put you an arm around you, say, you know what, let's walk through this together, you could yeah. have been in a different light? I think a lot of managers knew where I was at. I think a lot of managers knew, knew the position I was in. I'd been pulled aside by a lot of managers mm -hmm. who had obviously been in the public eye. They'd heard where I was, what I was doing mm -hmm. um, and how I was acting and they couldn't piece together how that guy could be out there on a Monday night, but yet here on a Tuesday morning mm -hmm. and doing, so it was kind of confusing for them to piece together. and. They were saying one side of me that uh, wants to help the youngsters, wants to be the hardest trainer and push everyone forward and work hard, and then they're hearing, oh, this guy was out drunk. So it's kind of, it was kind of a really sort of bizarre situation, if you like. I feel like um, the coaches um, arguably could have done more if they knew more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just feel like um, there's a lack of obviously education and like a lack of experience with, with, with managers on this subject. And I feel yeah. like until that changes, then it's impossible for, for the people to help. They try to help, they want to help. It's just um, a lack of understanding. Okay, and you, you spoke about being vulnerable. I myself, I believe that social media, when I look at social media, everything is perfect. Everything is so crystal clear. And you speaking up being vulnerable, I think is an amazing point, don't you think? Yeah, I appreciate that. Because yeah. it makes people realize that it is okay not to yeah. be perfect. It's okay if you're human at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. So honestly, thank you so, so much for giving me this time. No and problem, man. It's been a pleasure. I hope I'll be seeing you very soon. Cool, man. Thank, thank you.